When we think about release from suffering, we want to remember that all beings means all beings, and that there are animals around us in our lives who help us with our own freedom from suffering, and in turn, we can help them too. Hi, it's Margaret Maloney, and welcome to the Death Dhamma Podcast. I'm a Buddhist practitioner out here in the world, having experienced the loss of my loved ones and knowing how much my Buddhist practice helped me on my grief journey. And now, together, we have this safe space to discuss death, dying, grief, and the Buddhist teachings that help us really understand attachment, impermanence, being compassionate, being death ready, what it means to live a life so that we can have a peaceful death. Yep, it's a big topic and we're going to take it on together. Let's go. Dogs have the best reputation for offering unconditional love, for being man's best friend, and for really taking care of their humans when their human is sad or upset or sick. What about cats? You know, there's that joke, right, that cats have staff. Well, maybe so, but there are times when our feline friends can also help us. So today, we're going to take a look at pets and how pets help us through difficult times when we are suffering. Animals to the rescue. Many of us find solace and support in the companionship of our pets during life's toughest moments. We face challenges with our health, issues at work, breakups, and death. Dr. Margaret Paul, an associate professor of psychiatry at the University of California, Davis, authored a study that found that having a pet changes our behavior, helping us to feel more connected to others. Part of the findings have to do with how pet ownership can help us move forward after the loss of a loved one. Of the 1,000 people surveyed over the course of 10 years, those who had a pet reported being self-sufficient and in good emotional health six months after the loss. Another related study found that having a pet is helpful during times of personal crisis. In a poignant episode of the show Afterlife on Netflix, we witness how a pet can provide lifeline in moments of despair. We find Tony, a recent widower, sitting in his bathtub. It's full of water, and he holds a razor up to one of his wrists. Losing the love of his life to cancer has brought him to the lowest of lows. He questions why he should live, and he does not know how to go on without her. He looks like he's about to slash his wrists. All of a sudden, there's a soft whimper. He looks toward the open bathroom door where his dog, Brandy, stands with an expectant look on her face. Tony says, Are you hungry, girl? And with that, he puts the razor down, drains the tub, and follows his dog into the kitchen, thoughts of suicide behind him for now. The scene is beautifully expressive one of many that show how our bonds with our furry family members help our mental health. And during the grieving process, most of us need help. When my mother and my husband died within five days of one another, I felt as if I'd been cut in half length ways. I was thrown completely off balance. Nothing was quite working. There I sat in my house with my two cats. At that time, they were already 12 and 13 years old, I really thought that, you know, the Murphy's Law of Death meant that at any moment, one or both of those cats would die, right? Like that would just be my luck. That's what was going to happen. And then I really would be completely alone. Sometimes I would look at them and say, please don't die. Please don't die. Just stay for at least another year. And I know that was silly because I already knew there was no bargaining with death. Fortunately for me, though, one lived three more years and the other an impressive five additional years. Now, cats don't always receive high marks for being caring or empathetic, but my two definitely rallied around me. And you could ironically say or cynically say, well, they just wanted to make sure someone was going to feed them. Maybe. I didn't ask. I don't know. But one of them was always right next to me. Sometimes I wondered if perhaps they had set up some type of, you know, schedule. One had mornings, the other had afternoons, and they both kept an eye on me an eye on me during the evening. You know, at night when I was trying to sleep, 
one or both of them would curl up right next to me. Maybe it's because there was extra room in the bed now, or maybe it was cold, but I knew that I was not alone. You know, so going back to afterlife, Tony makes a comment to Brandy that if she could open her own food tins, he would be dead. The healing power of having a pet to take care of cannot be overemphasized. While I never felt suicidal, certainly I experienced depression. And having two furry creatures depending on me for their care was a great way to help take me out of myself. For a few moments each day, my thoughts were directed toward their care. One of them had been especially close to my husband, Ed, and I worried about how she would handle his death. She became my watch cat. It seemed like every time I turned around, there she was, just keeping an eye on me. I'm so glad that my two cats were part of my grief journey. And definitely, you know, that was a time of suffering, and they were there, and they helped. Their participation, whether they meant to or not, helped. Here are some of the benefits that our pets provide us when we navigate the loss of a loved one. First, you know, taking care of your pet gives you a purpose, something to do beyond feeling sad or taking care of the business of death because there's a lot of business of death stuff that you need to navigate. Another idea, some days you might not be ready for the company of other humans, but you don't want to be all alone. And so there they are. And even cats sometimes are undemanding. Next, when you come home, you're not coming back to an empty house. You have someone waiting for you on the other side of the door. Next, when you talk to yourself, you have a listener. Okay, maybe you don't talk to yourselves, but I do. I still do. I will tell you what, sometimes I know that I'm talking to myself a lot because I will look and I will see one of my cats just sitting there staring at me. I don't know what he's thinking, but I guess he's listening. So yeah, when you talk to yourself, you have a listener, and that makes a big difference. You find you're not just talking to yourself after all. Well, I don't know about me, but for the rest of you, right? Another helpful point, your pet can be a link to your your deceased loved one. If you shared a pet together, now that pet is part of a happy shared memory. Also, pets, especially cats, are a good reminder that you are not the center of the universe. Yeah, definitely cats will remind you. You are not the center of the universe. Everything is not about you. And also feed me. And last but not least, sometimes your pets do unpredictable things. Dragging ribbons out of the closet, knocking over flowers, or (laughs) jumping on your bladder to wake you up. All of these things, even the jumping on the bladder part, are welcome distractions. And they make you smile sometimes and, and, you know, maybe even help you laugh. So... Our pets can be incredible sources of support, but that doesn't mean they're our only source of support. And it wouldn't be right of me to say, you know, seek professional assistance if you really find yourself in a dark place, because we can't expect our pets to do everything for us. But having pets is very helpful. And then there's also pet therapy. Pet therapy is beneficial for a wide range of people, not just those dealing with grief, There was a time when my mother-in-law resided in an assisted living facility. She wasn't thrilled about moving, but it did allow her to have the right amount of independence and also the right amount of care. The nearby location allowed me to visit her a few days a week. And as I did, I began to learn the schedule. The activities coordinator worked to create an environment where each day residents could be in, you know, they could be as social or reclusive as they so desired. And that was good because sometimes my mother-in-law didn't want to deal with other people and sometimes she wanted to be very social. So I I saw the value in that. There were residents who were very mobile, active, and talkative. And there was one elderly man who zipped around in his electric wheelchair. He was fast and furious. I'm going to say emphasis on furious. He was nonverbal though. So he would come to events, but he seemed to be quite angry all the time. And if you didn't move out of his way he might just run you over with that chair. On Friday afternoons, they had happy hour with music and dancing. On Sunday mornings, there was a visit from a church group. And on one Sunday afternoon each month, the dogs came to visit. Some of the residents had their own cat or small dog, but most, most did not. 
That monthly visit of friendly dogs was a popular event. And although I'm not certain of their name, I know that a local therapy dog organization brought the dogs. About four or five dogs came to visit. And anyone who wanted to interact with them came downstairs and sat in the lobby area. One of my favorite interaction was between the man in the electric wheelchair and the dogs. So even though, you know, this man was nonverbal, and there are times when I saw him have a tantrum and lash out at others in a physical way, when the dogs were there, he was a different person. He smiled from ear to ear, and he just seemed happy to be petting one of the dogs. Those dogs brought many smiles whether it was someone who really wanted to pet and cuddle a pup, or someone like my mother-in-law who said that she didn't like animals, but still I would find her in the lobby on the dog visit Sunday, and she would be in the background watching from a distance. During those visits, I saw firsthand the value of the human-animal bond. The atmosphere was one of joy, and it seemed like the dogs were happy too. Not just because of the endless attention, although I'm sure that's pretty amazing too, right? Endless ear scruffs and chin scratches. They had an air of satisfaction, as if they knew that they were fulfilling their purpose. Spending time with pets is helpful. Not a complete remedy, right? Uh, Individuals who participated in surveys about the perks of having pets consistently agreed that pets are not a cure for mental health challenges. The consensus was that the pets can play an important role and help prevent worsening of symptoms. Pets can help make life more enjoyable while symptoms are present. Pets can bring us joy and help us with our mental and emotional health. Specific benefits could include a chance to feel pleasure, increased motivation, reduced anxiety, decreased number of panic attacks, more social connections. These benefits help reduce loneliness. Now having a pet is not a complete solution and it's not helpful to everyone. But in March 2020, the Journal of Affective Disorders published findings regarding pet ownership and depression in older adults. Most of the results were primarily positive, but sometimes pet ownership can increase negative feelings and emotional strain. And that just is a good reminder. Pet ownership isn't for everyone. And there isn't just one way for us to experience relief from suffering. And we can't expect our cats and dogs to take care of everything. Because to some people, pet ownership can lead to more anxiety. Having another life requiring care and feeding is more pressure. And a new pet owner can certainly feel overwhelmed with the responsibility, you know, and the uncertainty around how to take care of this this lovely creature. Uh, In a study on cats and their impact on depression and anxiety, sometimes new cat owners did not feel better. The duties of training the the cat, training the cat, cleaning the litter box, taking the cat to the vet, finding a pet sitter, again, all of that can add to anxiety which means before taking the leap into pet ownership, you know, research, ask questions, and ensure that the choice is right for you and for the animal. Because even right now, though, this discussion has really been focused on how having this pet and the interaction with the pet is helpful to you and I as humans and can help us during difficult times and give us some relief from suffering. We never want to do so at the expense of the feelings for the pet. We want it to be a healthy two-way relationship. Those are some thoughts that have come from Enlightenment Unleashed, how your pet can lead you to spiritual transformation. And in our next episode, we'll continue on taking a look at horse therapy and some programs where People who have been incarcerated have had the opportunity to interact and help raise and train dogs on how that has been useful and helpful for the humans and the dogs. I've got books for you, starting with Carpooling with Death, How Living with Death Will Make You Stronger, Wiser, and Fearless, the book that got me going and helped me to discuss going through the death of my loved ones, followed by Sitting with Death. 
Buddhist insights to help you face your fears and live a peaceful life based on season one of the Death Dhamma podcast and just recently Enlightenment Unleashed, how your pet can lead you to spiritual transformation because during our lifetime, we may see the rising and ceasing of many pets and we love them like they are our family. Find these on amazon.com or come see me at margaretmaloney.com. You've been listening to the Death Dhamma Podcast with your host, Margaret Maloney. Thank you so much for being here. Come find me on margaretmaloney.com, M-A-R-G-A-R-E-T-M-E-L-O-N-I.com. And until we meet again, may you be well, may you be happy, may you be at ease, and may you be free from suffering. Bye for now.